You're busy. You've got a decent practice. But nobody wants to be decent. You want to be great, and you want to have a great practice. So how do the most productive, profitable dentist in the nation balance real life, work, and profits, and somehow make it all seem fun? Well, it comes down to simple, everyday practices. So grab a lunch, join us as we chat with top clinicians and influencers to discover their formula for uncommon success. Are you ready? Then it's time to explore everyday practices with Vicki McManus-Peterson and Dr. Chad Johnson. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Everyday Practices. And I have a special guest with us today, Dr. Grant Olson from Springfield, Missouri. And we're also here today with Vicki McManus-Peterson, my right-hand lady. How are you doing, Vicki? I'm doing great. Woo-hoo. Excellent. And Grant, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Yay. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to, 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 talk, to chat. Yeah. So, you know, why don't we just dive into a few um, questions about your office? It's uh, called Innovative Dental. And if anyone's seen the website, it's got this cute little winky thing. Who thought of that? <laughs> so, uh, you know, it was kind of a funny uh, little way that that came about. I was, uh, you know, sharing the idea after my wife so brilliantly came up with the name Innovative Dental. I was putting it in like an initial and sending it to a, a friend that was going to be our, our first hygienist in the practice. And Looking at that, I, I, I flip my phone sideways and go, wait a second, that looks like a like maybe a, an emoticon. A little winky. And so from that, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I mean, if you look back at our Facebook page, the first rendition I did of it, it was uh, pretty terrible. But uh, fortunately, we got some professionals involved and quickly corrected that. And now it's something a little bit more, I, I'd say, uh, uh, appealing. So, yeah, uh, but yeah. that's, that's kind of how, yeah, yeah, there you go. So. I can really tell that you guys have a lot of fun. I mean, I think where your strengths lie is uh, in your uh, clinical skills and, and your aesthetics, but also in how you document and then market those. Those are three key components. If you do sucky work, you can document it all day long and it's not going to matter. And then if you do uh, you know, great looking work, but you're not able to document and market it, that also does no good. So, I sure. mean, first of all, you guys' brand is really cool. Then you're able to market from that brand and you're also able to show off the fact that indeed you can do nice work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, using using the social media, you know, back when it was kind of fairly fresh, you know, six years ago, um, it still has great appeal. Uh, and we can obviously talk in how the, those that landscapes kind of changed. It's still a, a great value to be on social media, but man, back then it was, we were, it was like the only, we were the only game in town when it came to marketing and paying for, uh, you know, good pieces of work and, and stories of how we've transformed a smile on, on it was social media. Fruit. And those, right. It was. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But your reach was was really far because you're in Springfield, Missouri, and so you were able to get some of the small towns. I mean, is that basically were you were you hyper focused on Springfield itself, or were you all like, is it a both and kind of thing that you were also marketing into small towns? Was it just social media because it was so cost effective, and how has that changed? I have too many questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, those are good. No, I like it. So. So, you know, when you're talking about like a focus on, a, on, a, on how you market and the targeting that we want to have for our practice, we know that we obviously most, I'd say most dentists aren't going to turn away your basic fillings and crowns, even if they do cosmetic work. But what we found is that by targeting the marketing towards people that appreciate straighter teeth with Invisalign and uh, veneers, uh, you know, same day, whether that's same day or you know, done in a lab, just, you know, quality smile work, uh, along with maybe, you know, implant dentistry. So you start targeting people that want or need those things. And voila, you attract even great patients that maybe don't need those things. So as far as a marketing um, kind of philosophy, we've, we've not just said, hey, let's just do blanket new patients. Let's target the ones we want. And we're going to get a whole ton of people that will be new patients of ours that don't necessarily need that be great general patients, but we're going to be able to build a practice that does have, um, you know, those, those targeted treatments. And we called those the the big four in our practice. It's kind of what we want to be known for is, you know, braces for the kids, Invisalign for our adults. And we even do some kids with that, but mostly adults, uh, guided 3d guided implants with uh, Serona's technology, being able to to showcase that. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, same, same day veneers. So, you put those four together and they really have um, transformed our practice because of the technology and the way that patients can now understand this advanced dentistry. 
Vicky, I'm going to hog him, but I... No, I got a question. Let me ask. Do it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so as you were targeting patients, did you find anything that surprised you? Like, was there an age or a gender or economic group or anything like that that was attracted to, you know, it, I'm, I'm looking for the stereotypes here, right? So implant people, yeah, so, blah, blah, blah. so what surprised you as you targeted? Well, so, I mean, probably some of the most surprising things have been that, you know, there isn't this um, box that we want to put people in. I mean, I, I would, I would definitely agree that if you wanted to maybe pull a percentage of number of people that maybe let's say do veneers uh, in our practice, I'd say it's probably mostly women, uh, probably middle aged to, to older women, which is probably what you'd expect because of the disposable income. Um, it, but I mean, when you start actually seeing the the really uh, transformative smiles we've been able to be a part of, you'd probably be, probably be pretty shocked um, that a lot of them are, you know, middle-aged men, young young guys, young guys that have been missing their teeth uh, for a while. I mean, one of the transformations I got this Friday is a, a gentleman that uh, needs uh, five implants to hold an upper denture, and uh, you know, he's he's a I want to say 35, 40 years old. So oh, wow. you know, it's kind of uh, different how. Um, the marketing is able to, to really get out there with social media. And then, I mean, one of the things I was going to really try to help make clear is that marketing is a marathon and not a sprint. Yes. And, you all know, right. with, well, with we're social done with media. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, there you go. You said it all so, right. With, all right. I mean, so with social, because I get all, I get asked all the time, you know, how, how do you explain your success? And I mean, besides God's grace and our practice and an amazing team. And I can talk about that all day too. Sure. Um, you know, we've played the long game and it's right. been, uh, you know, the, the pie piecing together of uh, reviews, uh, good website content, sharing good stories. Not a, neither, neither one of them is your silver bullet where you're going to magically make your practice boom. But when you put it all together, what happens in Google search is something magical. And that's that you end up on the first page for everything. Right. So now we've placed ourselves on the front page uh, for nearly any search terms within 150 miles. And so Organically that's almost. a huge advantage. Yeah. And, and one thing I would share with about targeting uh, marketing versus organic search, target marketing is going to give you good people, but they're maybe not as ready to buy. When you have an organic search patient that spend time, spends tons of time going to your website, and you can see this, by the way, when you look at uh, time spent on site, right? You can see right. when the, whether they're organic or whether you targeted them. The people that are organically searching, they're, they're going to spend sometimes three, four, five times as much time uh, researching you. And what do you, who do you think is ready to buy, right, when they come in? They're ready. They understand you. They know why they chose you. And so now you've got a very – excited patient, which is so much uh, easier for our team to help. Um, and so, yeah, great, great. Uh, you know, that, I'm that's glad just that, a long game though, right? I'm glad that we organically kind of circled around to this because what you're talking about in these social media strategies, it's not just social media. It's, it's your full online reputation, right? It's your full online footprint right. and presence. And I would say that right. was the number one driving reason back in, I don't know, 2013, 2014, we created this concept of forever site, which includes ongoing aggressive updates of the of doctor's websites and their pictures and their content and their team and their SEO and their social media and all of that, because it's not a one and done kind of thing. And, right. you know, my philosophy owning practices and consulting as long as we have is that we build our business on cash flow and that, and I sure. certainly, didn't budget for my next web build, you know, <laughs> even if you're right. arguing, great, I don't, I don't, doctors don't sit around and say, well, I built my website and that was so fun. Let's do it again in 18 mm -hmm. months and pay another five to 10 or 20 grand. So right. you, you hit on, it, it's not a magic bullet, but it is a magic formula of it's a marathon. Yeah. It's constant. It should be fun, but there's something of a metronome to it. Sure. Oh Yeah. Very, very good. I love that. I love that. So was there any surprises in like economy with your patients? Are they all like rich and they pay cash up front? And oh, oh, answer right. yes. 
<laughs> yes, they're all loaded here in Springfield, Missouri. We got nothing but movie stars. You found that yeah. ideal patient. But, uh, that dentists, like come you. one, come all. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and what's great when we started this, I remember just a, a brief conversation with one of our uh, – uh, uh, Patterson reps, and it was it was fun. She was kind of like going, "What are you What are you trying to create here?" And I said, "You know what? Let's create this spa like five star experience available and treated to everyone. Uh, so you know whether you have insurance, whether you don't have insurance, whether you have tons of money, whether you have a little bit of money. We try to make certain that our our every uh, patient that walks through our doors gets a an amazing experience that leaves them with a raving smile, not just." kind of, well, that was okay. You know, we want them, the goal is that, you know, we have a little saying, right? It goes, you know, at the very most, we're going to transform your lives. And at the very <laughs> least, we're going to improve your smart. We're going to improve your day, right? So we're going to improve your day at the very least. So. That's awesome. It, Vicky, isn't, isn't he a gem? I mean, I, I don't mean, you know, that, that saying gets used in a mean way a lot of times, but it, it's, a, he's a true gem. I knew we needed to get him on our podcast. <laughs> You're too much. <laughs> well, what I, what I, what I'm hearing and really sensing from you, Grant, is that it's your deep commitment to people and, and you're mm-hmm. so grounded and committed in what you're doing. And what a, what a huge role model you are. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. I mean, we have a, we have a, a lot of investment, honestly, in um, our team because, you know, I, I think a lot of dentists do spend a lot of time with their team, but we, we, and as far as my wife and I, uh, we, we love the, the team we get to work with. And we really appreciate them giving their lives to our practice and our patients. And um, so it's, it's kind of a, a challenge of ours and kind of a, a, oh, a purpose to make certain that we are good stewards of that by encouraging them in life and, and being a part of creating an environment that when they come in every day is uh, a joyful thing that they get to be a part of, uh, you know, impacting people rather than focusing on the challenges that we all have uh, in our lives. So it's a, it's a, it's a nice, uh, I would say release for a lot of people to come to work. It's kind of, kind of crazy, but that, that's what allows um, our team to deliver amazing service. I mean, when you talk about great practices uh, and being able to do advanced dentistry, it's not about there being some amazing, fanatic, awesome dentist that has so much skills. I mean, I appreciate your comments earlier, Chad, about my skill set, and I, I think I'm always trying to get better, but I wish it was that simple, right? I mean, I think a lot of dentists probably do wish it was that simple. If I could just be good at dentistry and you know, take CE and be uh, really great at these margins and design amazing smiles that I can grow a practice in it, we all know that, uh, man, it's a little disappointing. It's a lot harder than that. And it's the people that are with your patients more than you are. And uh, they're in the room with the patient when you're not. And they're, they're sharing their true, uh, authentic experience being a team member in your practice and what it's like to work for you and with you and, and transform people's smiles. And when they are 100% bought in and really feel that you are for the patient, they tell patients that. And uh, when somebody's going to part with a lot of money and invest in their smile, that's how do you put a price tag on that? And it, and it's just fun. You see people that would maybe have a lot of hesitancy. Maybe they came in with a lot of reservations on um, how they're going to get their smile fixed and they leave, you know, not even getting the work done and they're leaving a review saying, I can't wait to come back and, and transform my smile. That that's a, a true win. And that's only given uh, from a, from a team that's, that's all in all in on that. That's cool. It, you're, you're, the sincerity just oozes from, it was a couple of years ago, I was looking at your website and also YouTube stuff. And I was just like, man, this just, you know what, it's probably been more than a couple of years too. Uh, when, when I first ran across some of your posts on, well, I bet that was, were, were you posting about like 2013, 2014 even? Or was it a little later than that? Yeah. So 20, 2013 is when uh, Innovative Dental started. So it had been January. You yeah. know, my wife goes, I remember she goes, you know what? I think you should get a, a Facebook account. I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, I think you should probably start getting on there and just sharing what you're about and what your practice is going to be like. And the hip people start are starting to congregate there lately. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, basically innovative dental is all, all Lauren Olson. She's, she's a brilliant lady, right? She, That's she, what I wanted to do me is to do Facebook. Yes. I, it's almost like Vicky, we need to say, Hey, let's get Lauren on it. Is that her name? Lauren? Yeah. Well, yeah, the, the yeah. secret's out because I, I wondered when I first saw your stuff, I wonder if Grant is doing this or if it's his wife that's really dumping into this because it's got a really nice touch. What's her background? 
So, you know, her background uh, is teaching. So she taught uh, for a while and she, she's, I mean, she's the best supporter. I mean, she comes in with an enthusiasm and uh, support for, uh, you know, really something that probably started more as my vision and mission in life. And it's really something that's become ours. And she, wow. she's now does a lot of our marketing pieces and she's, uh, um, you know, does she, a great, does she edit uh, those herself? Person. No, I mean, no, no, she, she doesn't do maybe the editing aspects of it, but, okay. uh, you know, writes a lot of the content uh, yeah. right now. She's working on rewriting our website content and, you know, she uh, does our, our magazine articles and things like that. So, um, she's really great with words as you, I mean, she's an English you know, teacher. So yes. that, uh, that skill coming from, uh, being an English teacher has helped her big time to, to make a difference for us. Isn't that so cool? I'm just in awe. I mean, I, yeah. I sometimes wonder, man, I've got to be, uh, uh, ready for the next question, but I want to soak on each for like 10 minutes at a time, man. Um, so Vicki, do you, do you have, I mean, I don't want to hog it. I'll keep going. Do you have, I know we just said we're, we're coming to the close of this here, but you know, Grant, you just sound so solid in your leadership and so certain of where you are now. Was there a point in time where there was some uncertainty or where you were trying to find your leadership foothold? And if there, if you, you may, you may be one of those lucky one natural born leaders and you're like to no. your Boy yeah. Scout troop and you're just like, you know, president of your class in high school. Were you that no. guy or did you have to kind of learn your leadership uh, steps along the way? Yeah. I mean, there's a, uh, there's no doubt that uh, there's a hunger to be, to lead. Right. So there's that. And I, and I want to lead because I want to impact people. And I think leaders are able to do that. Um, and I want to make a difference, but, as far as just a natural God given um, talent in all that area, I'd say and not necessarily. It's, it's something that was even at the beginning difficult to, uh, to speak into a camera or, or maybe, you know, do something like a podcast or to even speak in front of a team of six or eight individuals when we started. So mm-hmm. I remember um, starting, I didn't really have much other than a, a, a rudimentary vision of where we wanted to go, but I knew that we wanted to be different. And so that, that's starting with about six, I think we started with six people at Innovative Dental. Um, I remember telling him with six people on the schedule, I mean, that's all we had our first day. Uh, wow. I said, uh, let's go out there and you know what? We got six people. We can, we can be over the top kind and make a big difference for them today. And that's really, we started just with the one, you know, you know, value. A lot of corporations have, you know, three, four, five uh, core values. And ours at first was just, we didn't, I would, I'd never ran a practice. Uh, our front desk had never been front desk. Our lady who did insurance never had done insurance. Um, I mean, you, I can go on and on. Nobody in the role that we were in had a skill that had been there for more than a few months. And so we had to dig deep and to just go, you know what? We want to be different. And so it tells you that mindset really is the ultimate direction for any uh, yeah. successful business and you got to be have that and, and mindset just wins, right? Cause it's like the tortoise and the hare, you know, the, the emotion will burn out and you'll be right. a, a, a tight in the wind almost. And then if you've got a, a clear vision and mindset that is true to yourself every day, true to, true to your vision every day, um, it's just a slow force to be reckoned with and it'll, it'll grow a, a, yeah. an organization and, and it uh, is, is definitely worked well for us. Um, but no, I, as far as like, how do I try to, I'm constantly listening to podcasts. I'm constantly, uh, you know, I, every morning my workout, I have a workout routine where I'm working out and lifting weights, but at the same time, I'm plugging in some YouTube motivation or listening to an, you know, an, an audio book. And I figure, Hey, if I've got an hour in the morning, I can not only work out my body, I can work out my mind. Right. And that's incredibly grounding for me because, uh, by the time it, you know, I show up at work, I've already got my mind right. And, um, I think that that's a real strength. Um, there. I think you just like, you just put it all in a nutshell right there. Hey, there was this other little company that had the core value of be different. You might've heard of it. It was Apple and yeah. <laughs> a young guy. By the name yeah. Of <laughs> yeah. But look, but look where yeah, they they're are. doing all right. Yeah. Man, what a pleasure it has been spending some time with you today. This has been a treat. Thank you, Chad, for recommending that we bring Grant on. I'm so glad I did. Yeah. 
Thanks for having me, guys. It was a it was a joy to to get you know nerding out about uh, what what uh, I I love to do every day. And so uh, thanks. If, Appreciate if we that. weren't trying to be more mindful of our listeners' time and whatnot, I'd probably go another sure. hour. I'm serious, but you've got your kids to get to, so I hope you enjoy your family time. And what's cool about being productive is when you kill it at work and you do a great job with your leadership, then you can go home and enjoy family or whatever you want to enjoy and also kind of uh, disengage and enjoy uh, what you want to enjoy rather than being a slave to work and a slave to teeth and a slave it's to death. something more than teeth? Right. Absolutely. Come to find Absolutely. out. Really? Is there more than that? I know. Come to find out. So Grant, we have one more silly question for you. Sure. You respond with the first thing that comes to mind. I'm going to give you two words. You choose one or the other. Right, let's do it. Bacon okay. or eggs? Oh, bacon. All right. We got ourselves a Midwest <laughs> baconer right there. Dr. I mean, Grant, you thanks can again for joining us. Bacon oh, go ahead. Good, right? What's that? Well, I was just going to say, it's amazing, right? Right. Absolutely. <laughs> that's, why, that's why you got to go bacon. Because you All can right. throw it on anything, a cheeseburger, uh, in yeah. your eggs. You can wrap. You can wrap fruit. I mean, I don't, you can wrap almost anything with bacon. That might be pushing uh, it, but I'll let it fly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fruits, fruits, fruits. Cantaloupe. I'm, I was, I was reaching. Cantaloupe there. wrapped in prosciutto, which is kind of tough. Yeah, let's not. That's a bad idea. All right. <laughs> hey, Chad, I just uh, have to tell you, I was uh, chatting with a friend of mine today that used to be a vegan, and I was telling her about her podcast. She's not in dentistry. I said, "Yeah, we got a pig as our as our mascot," because my my theory is that even vegans love bacon. And she goes, "That's the secret." Bacon is what turns the vegans. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It is. Yeah. That's funny. So now all the vegans are going to boo us, but that's okay. <laughs> right. Uh, wow. Shunned shunned by the vegan we, dental we, community. We'll be shunned for this. Oh, man. <laughs> Well, thanks for all of our listeners. Thanks to all of our listeners for joining us on this podcast today, Everyday Practices with Dr. Grant Olson. And Dr. Grant, thanks again for joining. You bet. Thank you. Bring your lunch or take us to the gym again next week to improve your everyday practices. Also, subscribe on iTunes, follow us on social media, and sign up for our email list. Now get out there and win with Everyday Practices.